Hello guys. Now in this lecture, let's discuss about pelvic inflammatory disease. Guys, what exactly it mean by pelvic inflammatory disease? Now let's see the definition of the pelvic inflammatory disease. It is the inflammation of the upper female reproductive tract, like inflammation of the uterus, inflammation of the fallopian tubes, inflammation of the ovaries, inflammation of the peritoneal cavity. What does it mean by? See, if upper female reproductive tract structures, for example, see if there is endometritis, that is inflammation of the uterine endometrium, salpingitis, inflammation of the tubes, if there is a tubo ovarian abscess infection, and pelvic peritonitis. These all accumulated and can be called as pelvic inflammatory disease that there is some inflammation going on in the pelvic organs now cervicitis and vaginitis they are not included under pelvic inflammatory disease now let's see what is the exact pathology the exact pathology is the ascending infection along with the sperms what does it mean by See, there is some infection happening along with the ascending sperms. See, in the sperms, there is some infection along with the sperms. That infection is coming into the uterus. From there, infection is going into the fallopian tubes. From there, it's going into the peritoneal cavity and causing peritonitis. So, it's a one-way thing. It's ascending infection along with the sperms. Now, what's the investigation of choice for the pelvic inflammatory disease the investigation of choice is laparoscopy so if you have done the laparoscopy as the fallopian tubes are affected that there is salpingitis you can see that the pus is extruding from the uh, fimbrial end so if, uh, laparoscopically you can see that the pus is coming out of the fallopian tubes see pus leaking from the fimbrial end of the fallopian tube you are visually documenting it now, see, it's not only just the ascending sperms, even atrogenic. See, if some procedures which were done by the doctor, even that can cause pelvic inflammatory disease. Means, for example, endometrial biopsy. See, for doing endometrial biopsy, you need to put a cannula, for example, into the uterus. See, when we are, while you are passing trans-cervically, you, you might take some infection along with your instrument and you can lodge that into the uterine cavity. So, it will cause inflammation of the uterus. From there, it can spread into the fallopian tubes. From there, it can go into the peritoneal cavity and cause peritonitis. Now, so, uh, atrogenic procedures like endometrial biopsy, a uterine a, a curatage, so you have to put the curate. So, while you are putting the curate, you might take some infection from the vagina or cervix or you can, you can push it into the uterus. Okay. So, that's how it can happen. And even insertion of an IUD, very, very important point. See, IUD insertion increases the risk of pelvic inflammatory disease. This IUD, intrauterine device, can take the infection along its way into the uterus and hysterosalpingography. In hysterosalpingography, you are going to pump the radio opaque dye from the cervix into the uterus. Okay, so while you are pushing this dye, this dye can take some bacteria into the uterus. So that can cause endometritis, that can lead to salpingitis, that can lead to tubo ovarian abscess followed by peritonitis. Now, guys, first, uh, first of all, we have discussed too many things, but the basic pelvic inflammatory disease is nothing but inflammation because of some organism. And what is that organism which is most commonly causing pelvic inflammatory disease? So, most common organism causing pelvic inflammatory disease is chlamydia. Okay, so chlamydia is the most common organism leading to pelvic inflammatory disease and even gonorrhea. Okay, so chlamydia followed by gonococci. Okay, so chlamydia, gonorrhea, even a genital tuberculosis, a mycoplasma, there are a lot hell of organisms which can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease, which can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease. 
important point to be noted here is this pelvic inflammatory disease it's not only just limited to the pelvic cavity or to the peritoneal cavity see this infection can spread okay this infection can spread so it can ascend up and even causes inflammation around the liver capsule this is known as perihepatitis okay so if the patient is having a severe pelvic inflammatory disease there will be inflammation even around the uh, liver see you can see here there is lots and lots of inflammatory process with the adhesion formation see you can see lots and lots of adhesions which are happening around the liver this is known as perihepatitis and these adhesions are just looking like a violin string so violin string like adhesions around the liver is known as perihepatitis and are seen especially with chlamydia okay chlamydia that leading to pelvic inflammatory disease now most common cause of pelvic inflammatory disease is chlamydia followed by gonorrhea but if this specifically ask you what's the most common cause of pelvic inflammatory disease in virgin females see why because chlamydia and gonorrhea actually they are sexually transmitted disease as i'm talking about virgin females in virgin females the most common cause of pelvic inflammatory disease is genital tuberculosis now let's see what are the risk factors for the pelvic inflammatory disease pelvic inflammatory disease is because of chlamydia and gonococci mainly they are sexually transmitted disease so those females those females who have multiple sexual partners are the partner with the multiple sexual partners okay the female is good uh, with the multiple sex uh, is having multiple sexual partners so she can be easily affected so it's a risk factor intercourse with the partner with untreated urethritis maybe this urethritis is because of gonococci okay gonorrhea will cause urethritis in male and cervicitis in female so uh, if you are uh, participating in intercourse with the one who is having untreated urethritis maybe because of gonorrhea the female can have pelvic inflammatory disease and if the female who have pelvic inflammatory disease again she will be at a risk of developing new pelvic inflammatory episodes okay use of an iud intrauterine device i have already said this intrauterine device can take the infection upward and presence of bacterial vaginosis or an std see if she is already have some infection going on in her vagina this infection can easily ascend upwards and that can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease or if there is any std okay gonococci or chlamydiosis this can ascend upwards and cause pelvic inflammatory disease one important point you guys should know is a nulli parity okay nulli parity is a risk factor for see this is the one point you have to know for all of the following conditions nulli parity is a risk factor for all of the following conditions multi parity is a protective factor see multi parity is a protective factor for pelvic inflammatory disease but nulli parity is a risk factor for pelvic inflammatory disease even for uterine fibroids uterine fibroids nulli parity is a risk factor multi parity is a protective factor just like that you have to remember okay so nulli parity is a risk factor for pelvic inflammatory disease and recent instrumentation of the uterus recent instrumentation of the uterus means what you have kept some uh, some instrument in the uterus uh, it can be uh, due to uh, dilation and curettage or it can be due to intrauterine device or it can be due to a uh, histosalpingography whatever so if you do if you have done some recent instrumentation that can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease now touching the female during her menses if she is touching her vagina this can push the ascending uh, infection upwards now cigarette smoking is a risk factor and sex uh, during menses usually sex during menses increases the uh, risk of sexually transmitted diseases so here gonococci chlamydia are the sexually transmitted diseases so sex during menses can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease and very very important my favorite point is absence of contraceptive pill use if the female is not using if the female is not using contraceptive pills means she is at risk of developing pelvic inflammatory disease question is why why because usually if you use or if a female is using oral contraceptive pills okay uh, her cervical mucus her cervical mucus will become thick so usage of oral contraceptive pills makes the cervical mucus thick so that infection cannot spread easily if she is not using contraceptive pills means 
if she is not using contraceptive pill her vaginal mucus is more thin and more mobile liquid so that even uh, so that the ascending infection can easily transmitted okay so absence of contraceptive pill use is a risk factor a using of a contraceptive practice like barriers and ocps ocps makes the cervical mucus thick and barriers like condoms don't allow the transmission of stds and pregnancy during pregnancy we can see uh, a thick cervical plug okay thick mucus cervical plug will be there so that won't allow the ascending infection to happen so pregnancy is a protective factor and menopause is also a protective factor so in this slide we have seen what are the protective factors and what are the risk factors for the development of pelvic inflammatory disease now we have already discussed that the laparoscopy is gold standard for the diagnosis of pelvic inflammatory disease where you can see the pus extruding out of the fallopian tubes now based on the laparoscopic evidence we have classified this pelvic inflammatory disease into three categories mild moderate and severe okay this is not that important mild is everything uh, not that bad severe means see there is a pyosalping inflammatory complex even violent string like adhesions around the liver that is perihepatitis see this is known as a fitz high cutis syndrome okay this is known as fitz uh, high, uh, high cutis uh, syndrome what does it mean by fitz high cutis syndrome guys it is nothing but the perihepatitis seen as a result of pelvic inflammatory disease now so based on the laparoscopy we have divided into mild moderate and severe why it is important why because we will be treating the patient based on whether he uh, whether she is having mild moderate or severe pelvic inflammatory disease now after saying this what are the symptoms of the pelvic inflammatory disease okay a female is having pelvic inflammatory disease so what are the symptoms she will be having the symptoms are mainly a pain okay she is having inflammation going on in her pelvis so there is a pain in her lower abdominal region okay dissociated with a period usually if she is having period she will be having pain but this pain is dissociated with the period so it's a continuous pain she is having okay and she is having fever because some infection is going on there will be leukocytosis in the laboratory results okay now you can also see a vaginal discharge guys remember whenever there is some infection in the female reproductive tract definitely you can find the discharge for example we have seen during bacterial vaginosis there is a creamy dirty white discharge in candidiasis we have seen a white curdy or cottage cheese like discharge in trichomoniasis we have seen uh, yellowish or yellowish to greenish okay yellow greenish color discharge in trichomoniasis in the same way here this pelvic inflammatory disease um, uh, is also an infection because of chlamydia and gonococci here also the female is going to present with the discharge which have foul odor okay now she is also having back pain this is something normal okay she will be having a pain during intercourse okay she as, as she is having inflammation going on in her pelvic uh, region whenever she is participating in intercourse she will be having dyspareunia that's pain during intercourse and irregular menstrual bleeding will be there metrorrhagia and she will be having a urinary discomfort and whenever you are trying to do pelvic examination that will cause pain why right? because in the pelvic region right there is inflammation so this is something very very uh, easy no need to remember remember that hard okay pelvic inflammation pain pelvic inflammation pain during sex pelvic inflammation pain during pelvic examination okay pelvic inflammation there is uh, abnormal menstrual bleeding now and also vaginal discharge is seen because it's an infection now guys uh, this is very very important this is the cdc criteria okay uh, exactly we have taken it from the book here you can see there are three criteria uh, minimal minimal criteria these three three minimal criteria and these are the additional criteria okay these are the diagnostic criteria okay definitive criteria see according to the cdc there are three minimal criteria means a female with pelvic inflammatory disease will have at least these three minimal criteria what are they guys cervical motion tenderness this is the super important point from this entire slide i request you guys to remember at least this if you find in your question that the female is having cervical motion tenderness 
during the physical, physical examination you have uh, done a cervical motion if it causes pain in pain her pain to her that is known as cervical motion tenderness okay so cervical motion tenderness is seen in pelvic inflammatory disease uterine tenderness will be seen or palpation and adnexal tenderness will be seen adnexal is the surrounding regions of the uterus these are the minimal criteria so additional criteria are as there is infection going on her temperature will be rising okay more than 38.3 degree centigrade infection going on there is a vaginal discharge mucopurulent and foul discharge will be seen and on saline wet mount of the vaginal discharge there is a leukorrhea increase the number of wbcs will be seen why because there is infection happening so there will be more uh, wbc in the discharge and erythrocyte sedimentation rate is increased by because of inflammation and even acute phase reactants like c reactive protein is elevated and uh, like you know uh, verification of cervical infection with neisseria gonorrhea or chlamydia trachomatis should be done why because pelvic inflammatory disease is mainly because of chlamydia or gonorrhea so you have to verify that this cervical infection is because of neisseria gonorrhea or chlamydia these are the additional criteria and we also have three more definitive criteria if you have this definitely it's the pelvic inflammatory disease what are they endometrial biopsy demonstrating endometritis you have done the endometrial biopsy and in that it's clear that there is endometritis this is a definitive criteria for the pelvic inflammatory disease now second thing is trans vaginal sonography or mri showing thickened fluid filled tubes with or without free pelvic fluid or tubo ovarian abscess okay simple that's the tubes are also affected one is uterus is affected on doing ultrasonography it just showed that the fallopian tubes are filled with the fluid maybe it's because of the pus a hydrosalpings or pyosalpings is seen okay one definitive criteria is endometritis that is uterine inflammation second definitive criteria is that tubes are affected that there is fluid filled tubes hydrosalpings okay and laparoscopic confirmation of the pid last one what is meant the laparoscopic confirmation of the pid laparoscopy is a gold standard on doing laparoscopy you will see that the press is extruding out of the fallopian tubes it's a, a definitive criteria okay this is the cdc criteria for diagnosis of the pelvic inflammatory disease